Today we're going to look at a gadget that used to be quite popular a few years ago, but uh, you don't see too many of these around anymore because, well, for one, the FCC made them illegal. So finding one is getting get kind of difficult, but if you've got one, they're actually very useful. What it is is it's a UHF TV transmitter that has a range of about 100 or so feet. It'll allow you to broadcast from any video source to any television on UHF channel 15. Check this out. Anyone who collects old analog televisions, such as myself, really needs to find one of these. Th these are an analog video transmitter. And unlike modulators, which will send your RF down a cable, which is fine, this one here will actually broadcast on the UHF band, and it's channel 15 is where they are preset. These units used to be a dime a dozen. They sold for around 20 I think 24 bucks or 25 bucks, 24.95 I think is what I paid for these. I've got a couple of them. I've actually got one that was made in Canada. I got to find it. It was called a Transvid and um, it was actually quite powerful. It would go a couple hundred feet. These ones here, you know, you're lucky if you get a hundred feet out of them because they're, they're FCC certified, right? But uh, the other one I had that was made in Canada, it was called a Transvid. And as I say, it's, I've got it around here somewhere. I just gotta, I gotta locate it. But it, it had a little bit more power than this one here. I think these things are maybe 100 milliwatts of power. We'll take it apart and look inside it momentarily. But what this does is this allows you to transmit over an over-the-air channel, channel 15 in this case, to your old NTSC televisions, so you can display your content on your old TVs without having to actually connect a cable to them. Perfect for someone like myself who's testing and one of my TVs is just blowing up here. Holy smoke, one of my little TVs is just acting up. I'm with, I guess I'm going to have to fix this. This one just started to go into distress. It had a great picture up until a few minutes ago and it's slowly fading away. So I guess we'll have to do a video on this. It's a little four and a half inch Hitachi that um, I bought this actually as a gift for my then girlfriend when she was like, I guess, I don't know, I think she was 18. I think I bought it for her 19th birthday. Um, and uh, I've had it all these years. But uh, I bought it at a shop that I worked at and it was a Hitachi dealer and this thing had been sitting in the store for the longest time. And uh, let's see what the date of manufacture of this thing is to see if it even says. September 1980 is when this was made. So this gives you an idea how old this is. And this was just working before I started the video. And as I was talking to you here, I noticed the picture started to shrink. So something has gone wrong with this unit. And it's gone wrong with it just now. I was going to show it off. But uh, hey, probably a capacitor. I bet you if I open this thing up, I'm going to find caps leaking. Maybe the power supply failed. But... It was working, it was working and it just started to collapse and pack it in. So I guess there's going to be a, a tear down and see what went wrong with this little TV. Soon, something blew up on this TV. Oh, there we go. Might help if I put the switch on the right mode. Now it's working. Huh, I wonder what, I wonder what happened. Just the vertical hold here to stop it from rolling. I think the control probably needs to get cleaned. Oh, that's the horizontal hold. Try the right one. There we go. Easier if I use a screwdriver to turn the controls as they're kind of hard to turn. That's a bit better. Okay. So I don't know what happened to that there. Other than maybe the... This has a timer in it as well, like to wake you up. It has a digital clock. and Maybe that switch was in the time mode and it was leaking and allowing current to go through, but it was in that switch mode, but I don't know whether I bumped it. I'll have to review the, the video and see if it was in that mode all along. It shouldn't have been on because there's no batteries in this thing. 
but it could be that switch was just kind of giving me some trouble. Anyway, back to the transmitter, the video sender. It allows you to send NTSC video to your television devices on channel 15. And I've just got, I'm just using a, a Raspberry Pi here to play some content that I've got stored on a, uh, a USB stick and feeding into this transmitter. But I've got four of my little small TVs here on show. Maybe we'll pick a different file here and get something else to watch. Let's move ahead to the next uh, the next video. Okay, so that's the next video. That should go off the screen momentarily here, I think. I used to use this Raspberry Pi for playing all kinds of media, but the, the problem was um, I updated to OSMC, and I made the, the mistake of having my internet plugged into it, and it took a new update automatically, and the new update is it has all kinds of crazy bugs in it there we go where it does weird things like prompt for updates I'll be playing a, a video off of it and all of a sudden it'll come up and say um, please check for updates drives me crazy anyway I've got this for my little small TVs in my collection here that uh, I've got playing on here and uh, two black and white and two color these are four of my smallest working TVs that I have. Of course, right here I've got the Sony 2-inch Pittsburgh Pirates version Watchman with the 2-inch. It's a it's a CRT, but the the Vetron gun is actually down in the bottom here, so it actually it actually shoots the beam up and the beam curves to the back and projects onto you can see the curve on the back of the tube you can see it there kinda cool that uh, Sony came up with a, a, a nifty idea to make a pocket TV that used a CRT that you could just hold in your hand and you, know, you can put rechargeable batteries in it and it will run for a couple of hours this of course would have been popular back in the days of people taking the uh, TV to the ball game to watch the replays and, and watch the, the play by play and between innings and stuff and all that type of stuff that was broadcast on TV and they could take their little TV with them or they could take their TV with them to watch news and stuff while they were at the game but that's what these were geared up for so this is the little Sony the little Sony Watchman game also I have here in my collection of TVs I think I got the color turned a little too high on this one it's a little better I have my little this is a Samsung it's a Cosmo, but it's made by Samsung. It's a small five inch color CRT, which I actually use this thing, believe it or not. I use this when I'm doing my film to digital transfers just because it's small and it gives me a larger screen than the one that's on the Wolverine and it gives me an idea what it's gonna look like on a TV. So I actually use this little TV as a monitor when I'm doing that type of stuff. Next to that is the smallest color TV that was ever made. This one's a Panasonic, and I just lost power. My power cord just fell out there. We'll just, whoops, we'll just plug that back in. And retune. Isn't that cool? It's one and a half inch Delta Matrix tube, and my my light overhead here is kind of washing it out but it has this magnifier lens I can take off and uh, show you the picture off this one we'll set it over here and I'll just uh, zoom the camera in on it a bit so there's a close-up of the screen that's about as close up as I can get to this and if I shade the screen a little better get some of the light in the room here from bouncing off the screen you get an idea the resolution is not really high on tubes like this, 
because they you still had to have a shadow mask but the fact that they're able to actually make a pitcher tube a full color pitcher tube with three guns <clears throat> a red green and blue gun configured in a delta matrix array like a delta um, shadow, shadow mask it's just amazing that they actually made a tube that small and it might not look at on camera because I'm zoomed in exceptionally close and of course a high-definition camera is going to magnify all those little dots but if you're watching this thing it actually has a pretty respectable picture and uh, if I put the magnifier on here of course it it gets better now you can actually see if I put the magnifier on oops that didn't go on right there we go Panasonic is actually on the glass of the magnifier block that light from hitting it but there you go that's the say the smallest color television that uh, is made that uses a CRT in fact I think it's probably the smallest color television period because I don't think many of the or any of the LCD TV manufacturers made a color set with a one and a half inch screen I know there was some three inch LCD screen TVs maybe some two inch but this is a one and a half inch but it actually looks pretty darn good See if I can get that light out of there it's kind of annoying every light in here doesn't matter what light I put on I'm getting reflections anyway that's the one and a half inch and of course by comparison you can see that this one here uses an inline gun you can see the colors all in a line this is an inline gun CRT 5 inch which was another small one. Oh, I didn't I didn't turn on my Sony 8 inch let's take a look at that one of course that one's the Sony 8 inch Trinitron I'm getting a bit of uh, interference on it here just from reflections I guess in the room here if I move the antenna around a bit it will improve but anyway that's my my Trinitron 8 inch Sony Trinitron again it's great to have one of these little transmitters for playing around with old analog TV so you don't have to actually hook up wires to them which is always nice gives you an idea what type of picture the uh, little tubes can deliver let's uh, look inside this transmitter so to open this up the top just pops off I'll unscrew the antenna to do this I ha actually have another one of these that I I put a, an F81 connector on so that I can connect it to an external antenna and uh, it has a little more range than this one but I figured I would just show this one off so here's what's inside there's not a heck of a lot to them doesn't get much simpler than that what do we got in this three transistors four transistors coil couple coils a tuning capacitor um, a transformer our coil this would be for I think for the sound and there's no I don't believe there's any integrated circuits on this thing at all it's just it's all through hole uh, it's just all through hole parts but there's really not much to this at all as you can see we've got our audio and video inputs a couple there's a couple capacitors here and we're going to have an oscillator a UHF oscillator and probably one for the sound um, 4.5 megahertz oscillator for the sound and uh, basically a modulator and an output transistor they're very low power this thing's using a 2SC what is it using here can we see it? 2SC uh, 2570 
is the uh, final output transistor that drives the antenna. As I say, it's, it's very low power. We're, we're talking only a couple of milliwatts of power here because to be legal, you know, you can't be you can't be transmitting a signal that's going to go more than a few feet, but uh, it's enough to get around the house. I remember uh, using one of these things at one time with a security camera, and uh, I was able to pick it up anywhere in the house and even outside, out to the street, you know, a, a house or two over. Um, it would go a couple hundred feet. The transmit one, not this one. Uh, but the other one I had would go a little bit further. But it was it was basically the same thing. It was essentially the same circuit as this. It was like three or four trans four transistors as well. But there's not a lot to these things. Let's say they're they're pretty they're pretty simple, pretty simple devices. But a must have if you collect old televisions and you want to work on them. Now they're only good for televisions that have UHF tuners. If you're going back. You know, to TVs made in the 1950s before UHF uh, uh, tuners became common, it's not going to work. But any of the televisions that have a UHF tuner, these are going to work just fine. Anyway, I just wanted to show this off and show you guys my little TVs again. I try to get these sets working from time to time because it's not good to leave electronics where they're not being used. So I grab the little portables and I every so often I grab them and, and just hook them up and, you know, run them for two or three hours just to keep the capacitors in good shape and uh, keep everything working and uh, you know run them for a bit I'll run these for the rest of the night and then I'll turn them off and put them away again until the next time but anyway that's my collection of small CRT TVs the smallest ones so I've got a two inch black and white a four and a half inch black and white one and a half inch color five inch color and an eight inch color sitting here on the bench running playing some videos off of my Raspberry Pi and uh, through my little video transmitter. If I dig up the other one, I'll uh, do a video on that if I can find it. And the, the other, the one that was made in Canada, this is a Chinese one obviously, but the other one I got many, 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 many years ago. And it was built by a chap in North Vancouver. And he was selling them through the local video stores at the time. That was long before the uh, 2.4 gigahertz, uh, uh, what was that one called, uh, that they had. It was, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of it, but there was one that was put out that was very popular. Um, that was on the 2.4 gigahertz band and it came with a, a transmitter and a receiver. And those ones... Uh, it would transmit stereo audio. A lot of the hams uh, converted those into ATV transmitters because they could operate on the ham band on 2.4 gigahertz. But uh, this is before. This is before them. And uh, from what I understand, they made these things illegal. They stopped selling them because, uh, of course, they would interfere with uh, any TV stations that were broadcasting on channel 15. So, a uh, little piece of TV history. If you want a little transmitter, Curtis Video Sender model AVS700. It's kind of an essential piece of equipment to have for anybody who collects old TVs and wants to be able to display stuff on them. Especially ones that don't have AV inputs and you have to go through the tuner. That or a modulator. Modulators work very well as well, but you gotta hook up a cable. It's just a little more a little more cool because you're taking advantage of everything and you're broadcasting it wirelessly. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one real soon. And I thought I was going to have to fix this thing, but maybe it was just that switch. Hmm. We'll see. Catch you in the next one. Bye for now.